Ever wonder how much you truly know about the Roman Empire, one of history's most influential civilizations? Welcome dear listeners to Roman Empire Riddles, a journey into the past where we challenge your knowledge of ancient Rome. We've got a series of intriguing questions lined up for you, each a riddle wrapped in an enigma, all about the empire that has left an indelible mark on the course of history. As we journey together, we'll uncover the answers and, in the process, reveal fascinating nuggets of information about this great civilization. So, grab a pen, a piece of parchment, or just your memory, and keep track of your score. It's time to put on your thinking toga, and see how well you know the empire that once stretched from the moors of Scotland to the sands of Egypt. Are you ready to challenge yourself? Let's dive into the world of ancient Rome. Let's start with the basics. Which ancient city was the capital of the Roman Empire? Now take a moment. Got your answer? If you said Rome, give yourself a pat on the back. That's right. The eternal city of Rome was the beating heart of the Roman Empire. It was the political, economic and cultural hub that held the vast empire together. From its grand temples and monuments to its bustling marketplaces, Rome was more than just a city. It was a symbol of the power and prestige of the empire. It was the city where emperors ruled, where laws were made, and where culture thrived. No wonder it was known as Caput Mundi or Head of the World. One question down, four more to go. Let's move on. Now can you name the first emperor of Rome? Drumroll please. If you said Julius Caesar I'm sorry but that's a common misconception. The correct answer is Augustus. Now let's take a trip back in time to the first century BCE. Rome was in the throes of civil war, with Julius Caesar at the helm. But it was his adopted son Octavian, who would rise from the ashes of the Republic to become Augustus, the first emperor of Rome. Born as Gaius Octavius Thorinus, he was thrust into the political arena at the tender age of 18 when Julius Caesar was assassinated. He was named as Caesar's heir, and this ignited a power struggle between him and Mark Antony, Caesar's right-hand man. After a decade-long power struggle and the famous naval battle of Actium, Octavian emerged victorious. In the year 27 BCE, the Roman Senate bestowed upon him the title of Augustus, meaning the revered one. And thus the Republic was transformed into an empire with Augustus at the helm. Augustus was more than just a conqueror, he was a visionary leader who initiated an era of relative peace known as the Pax Romana, or Roman peace. This period lasted for over 200 years during which Rome saw significant advancements in infrastructure, law, and culture. He was also a master of public relations. He cleverly portrayed himself as the restorer of the Republic, while holding absolute power. He commissioned poets like Virgil and Horace to write epics that glorified Rome under his rule, subtly promoting his regime. Augustus ruled for 41 years, the longest of any Roman emperor. He left a lasting legacy and set the standard for all future emperors. His reign marked the beginning of a new chapter in Roman history, transforming it from a city-state to a colossal empire that spanned three continents. And so, the answer to our question is the revered Augustus, the first emperor of Rome, the man who transformed a city in chaos into a beacon of civilization. Two down, three to go. Let's keep the momentum going. This one's a classic. Which famous Roman general crossed the Rubicon? Now take a moment. Let your mind wander back to those dusty roads of ancient Rome. The political intrigue, the clashing of swords. Time's up. The answer is none other than Julius Caesar. Yes, that's right. The same Julius Caesar who was a brilliant military strategist, a charismatic leader, and also the one who famously met his end on the Ides of March. But let's rewind a bit. The year was 49 BC. Caesar was then the governor of Gaul. The Rubicon, a small river in northern Italy, marked the boundary of his jurisdiction. Roman law forbade any general from crossing it with an army to prevent the rise of potential dictators. But Caesar, always one to push boundaries, literally and figuratively, did just that. He took a deep breath, probably muttered to himself, Alia Iacta Est or the die is cast, and led his army across the river. It was a bold, defiant move, a direct challenge to the Roman Senate and his political rival Pompey. This crossing of the Rubicon is significant because it marked the point of no return. It was the spark that ignited the flames of the Roman Civil War, a conflict that eventually led to the downfall of the Roman Republic and the rise of the Roman Empire. It was the moment when Caesar chose to gamble everything for power, setting in motion a series of events that would forever change the course of Roman history. In a broader sense, the phrase, crossing the Rubicon, has come to signify any action that leads to irrevocable consequences. It's a reminder of how one decision, one step, 
can alter the trajectory of not just one's own life but in Caesar's case the destiny of an entire civilization. Three questions down, two more to go. Onwards. Now, what was the name of the famous Roman road that connected Rome to its far-flung territories? A question to ponder, isn't it? Let's take a moment to let those wheels turn. Got an answer? Well, the road we're talking about is none other than the Appian Way, or as the Romans called it, Via Appia. The Appian Way was a vital artery of the Roman Empire, connecting Rome to Brindisi in southeast Italy. Its construction began in 312 BC under the direction of Appius Claudius Cicus, hence the name. But why was this road so significant you may ask? To start with the Appian Way wasn't just any road, it was the first long road of its kind, paving the way, quite literally, for an intricate network of roads that would crisscross the empire. It was a stunning feat of engineering, stretching over 350 miles when it was completed. The road wasn't merely a means of getting from point A to point B, no. It was a symbol of Roman power and ingenuity. It facilitated trade, allowed for swift movement of troops, and was a conduit for cultural exchange. The Appian Way was so well built that parts of it still exist today, a silent testament to Rome's engineering prowess. Imagine being a Roman soldier, walking on the same stones that still lie on the road today, or a merchant, traveling from distant lands, bringing goods to the heart of the empire. The Appian Way was more than a road, it was the lifeline of Rome, a symbol of the empire's far-reaching influence, and a testament to its indomitable spirit. So there you have it. The Appian Way, Rome's famous road, a vital thread in the fabric of the ancient world. Four down, one final question to go, brace yourselves. Finally, which Roman emperor built the impressive Pantheon? Now there's a question to pique the interest of history enthusiasts and architecture aficionados alike. A moment to ponder, one might say. The answer, my friends, is none other than Emperor Hadrian. Yes, that's right, Hadrian who reigned from 117 to 138. This remarkable ruler was not just a leader but an architect, and a lover of all things Greek. His fascination with architecture and Greek culture influenced his decision to build structures that would stand the test of time, and oh boy did they. The Pantheon, one of his most significant contributions, is a testament to the architectural genius of ancient Rome. Its name, derived from the Greek words pan meaning all, and theos meaning god, indicates its original purpose, a temple dedicated to all the Roman gods. This magnificent structure with its grand rotunda and iconic dome has been hailed as a perfect sphere within a cylinder. The harmonious balance between the height and the diameter of the dome, both measuring 143 feet, is a marvel of architectural precision. But the real showstopper is the oculus, the 30-foot wide opening at the very top of the dome. This eye to the sky, as it were, provides the only source of natural light within the Pantheon, casting dramatic shadows that shift and change throughout the day. And here's an impressive fact for you, the Pantheon has the largest unreinforced concrete dome in the world. Even with the advancements in modern engineering, we've yet to surpass this feat by the Romans. The Pantheon remains one of the best-preserved Roman buildings, a steadfast symbol of Rome's architectural prowess. It has survived the trials of time, standing tall and proud, a silent witness to the rise and fall of empires. And that's the final question, how did you fare? Whether you're a seasoned history buff or just dipping your toes in the vast ocean of the past, I hope this journey through the riddles of the Roman Empire has been as fascinating for you as it has been for me. So, how did you do? Did you uncover your knowledge of ancient Rome? Well, whether you aced the quiz or had a couple of surprises, it's clear that the Roman Empire continues to captivate us with its intriguing history. From the eternal city of Rome to the daring crossing of the Rubicon by Julius Caesar, from the transformative reign of Augustus to the architectural marvel of the Pantheon, we've journeyed through some incredible moments that have shaped the world as we know it. Perhaps you've learned something new or perhaps you've confirmed your status as a bona fide Roman history buff. Either way, we'd love to hear your thoughts, so feel free to share your score and any interesting insights in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more riveting historical riddles. Stay tuned, history enthusiasts, farewell, and may the spirits of ancient Rome guide you.